Yeah. So as you can see, this year the Christmas carols are going to be a bit different. But that's not going to stop us from celebrating the birth of baby Jesus. So let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to Family Carols. I'm Narek, I'm the youth pastor here. I'm Amy, the children and families pastor. Merry Christmas and it's wonderful to see you. Yeah, Merry Christmas. We have many amazing stuff planned for you today. We've got Christmas carols with a lot of singing. We also have the nativity story acted out by various different people and interactive prayers and an amazing talk and much more. If you're watching from your houses, make sure you stay tuned, you wear your Christmas jumpers and drink your hot chocolates and stay cozy. If you're watching from the building, from the church, we wanna feel the Christmas spirit. We wanna feel a lot of enthusiasm. This year, our Christmas offering is going towards the International Justice Mission. Later on in the service, we will hear more about their work and you'll have the opportunity to give towards their mission. Now we're gonna go watch the next video. So Amy, tell us what's the next video. The next video? Yeah. We have a video. We have a video? No, I thought, I thought you were in charge for the next I part. haven't planned anything. Me neither. Oh, anyway, um, I think there's some acting and stuff uh, coming up later or nativity story. So we're gonna go watch that and we're gonna come back here. Okay. See you all soon. Hello everyone. I am the storyteller, and today I am going to tell you one of the most amazing stories of all the time. This story is real, and this story is not just a story, it's more than a story. So let me tell you the story of the Christmas. Way back, in the very beginning, God had a very good idea about how he would save his people from not leaving his way and make them friends with him. It was the time to put his very good idea into action. There was a young woman called Mary. Mary lived in a town called Nazareth. She wasn't married, but she was going to get married to a man called Joseph, who was King David's great, 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 great grandson. God sent an angel called Gabriel to see her. He said, Hello, Mary. God loves you and is with you. Mary didn't understand what the angel meant, so she was worried and very confused. But the angel said, Don't worry, Mary. God is pleased with you. We're going to have a baby. Mary didn't understand how she could have a baby without a dad. She was confused again, but the angel told her that the Holy Spirit would come to her and that God would be the baby's dad. Mary said, God is the boss of me, so let what you said come true. Later, Joseph found out that Mary was going to have a baby. He thought she would done the wrong thing, so he decided not to marry her. But an angel came to him in a dream. Don't worry, Joseph. You should still marry Mary. Her baby is God's son, and he's going to save God's people from not living his way. When Joseph woke up, look how happy he is. He did what the angel said and took Mary home as his wife. All of this happened in just the way God's messengers had said it, it would hundreds of years before. Okay, it is recording. Ready? <laughs> Thank you. 
But also, I can't believe Angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her she's gonna have a baby. It's amazing. Yeah, and later on, the Angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph in his dream. That was so cool. What happened next? Wait until you see what happens next. <sighs> Mary and Joseph continue on their journey, trying to find a place where they can have baby Jesus. Wow, can't wait to see that. I'm so excited, Amy. I'm so excited. Me too. Do you remember Mary? Well, it was almost time for Mary to have the baby. The baby that Angel Gabriel told her about. Yes, baby Jesus. Far, far away in Rome, the Emperor Caesar Augustus, who was a bit like a king, he had an idea. Yes, this guy. He decided he wanted to know just how many people he was in charge of. So he ordered that everyone should be counted. For that to happen, everyone needed to travel to where their families were from. So Mary and Joseph packed up their things and made their way from Nazareth to the little town of Bethlehem. But there was a problem. When they got there, there were a lot of other people who had traveled to Bethlehem to be counted as well. All the places were full of visitors. So they checked all the hotels, all the motels, all the guest houses. There was no room. They also checked all the Airbnbs and all the bed and breakfast places. They couldn't find a room to stay in. Even though they couldn't find a room, it was time for Mary to have her baby. It was the time, people. Moments later, when baby Jesus was born, they put him down in the animal's food trough for his bed in the barn because that was the only place they could find for him. The animal's food trough was called a major. Mm. Meanwhile, some wise men were busy on a very interesting Zoom call. Ah, it's King Herod. He says you can't get him on the call. Oh, did you give him the password? Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, there we go, there we go. Um, Your Majesty, I think you might be on mute. You're on the, mute. You, yeah, you there. Mute. Just the button, the button, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got it? Hey. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Great. So you guys are the wise man from the East. How yes. How about that the right? Yes, that's yes. right. That's right. We've uh we've traveled a far away, we've traveled long. A new king has been born. He's the king of the Jews. We saw his star rise, and we've come to tell how great he is. Yep, that's right. And is there any possibility that you could point us in the right direction? Ooh, okay, okay. Um, give me a minute, okay? I will ask my advisors and I will get back to you, okay? I'm just going to mute uh, myself. How do you mute this? Um, yeah, how just do press, you yeah. Just, yeah, yeah okay. press the same button. Then you okay, yeah. okay. I, I mute it. I, I mute it myself, okay? Okay. What? I'm not having this. A new baby is being born. A new baby is going to be king. I'm the only king here, okay? Um, I'm the only king. What king Harrod? Um, king Harrod, I, uh, I, we can hear you. I think you forgot to mute yourself. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to mute myself now. Oh, that was awkward. Definitely. I'm sorry about that, guys. I was joking uh, with my advisors. We have a, you know, inside joke. Uh, mm. Yes, uh, nothing serious. Yeah, okay. no, we understand, we understand. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, so they say that God's messengers said he would be born in Bethlehem. Hold on, let me show you where is Bethlehem. How do you share your screen again? There's like a 
bottom you can bottom row of your screen. Yeah, your advisors should really have told you about this. Well, yeah. They're, they're, they're idiots. They don't know what they're, they're talking about. Next oh. to the the mute button is a Okay, let me go to Google video. Maps. Okay. I think it's here. Okay, do you see it? Oh. Yeah, we see it. Yes. Yeah, so Desh. It's just Desh. Uh, they say that he's going to be born in Bethlehem, Desh. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I mean, That's how do you how do you come back? How do you same button? Same button. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. 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 Anyway, I have to go. My advisors have made me very nice and delicious food. Well, not my advisors, my chefs. Um, but yeah, I have to go eat very yummy food. But just in case, um, when you found out where the exactly is the baby, please let me know. Please send me a text on WhatsApp. Okay? Yes? Yeah, I don't see why not. Because I want to go see him myself. You know, give, yeah. bring him a lot of great gifts. Yeah, um, we understand. Let me know. Great. Thank you so much. Looks like we're off to Bethlehem to see the newborn king. Great, let's go. Oh, wait, hold on, guys. Uh, I think someone else is trying to join the call. I get who could it be? Uh, his email says angelgabriel at heaven.net. Right. Well, let him join and we'll see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Are you an angel? Yeah, yeah. That, that is right. right. I'm, I'm an angel. angel. What, what, what are you doing in our Zoom call? I just dropped in to say that King Herod is crazy. He's not up to any good. He's not a good person, okay? Once you've seen the baby, take another route to go home. Go in a different way, okay? And also, don't tell King Herod where the baby is, okay? Where is the baby king, okay? Don't tell him. And also, I'm following him on Instagram and Facebook. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. We thought he seemed a bit weird, actually. Thanks for the tip. No worries. Bye bye. Well, we're off to the king. Have you got your presents? Yeah, got mine here. Oh, sorry about that. <sighs> Riquiera. There we go. There we go. After that very interesting call, the wise men followed the star and the star guided them to the place that baby King Jesus was born. Wow, we had many amazing carols with many amazing nativity stories acted by many amazing families and children and youth. But now it's the time to hear the talk. Uh, we are going to hear the talk from our amazing kids pastor, Amy. To you, Amy. Thank you. What happens when you walk into a room that has no light and no windows? It's so dark, you can't see. So maybe you would go stumbling around and you might hit your foot and you might fall over. And what would you need to do? You'd need to find a light switch or a candle. This was what it was like for the Jewish people before Jesus was born. They lived in a dark world. They were going backwards and forwards and doing things that hurt God, then saying sorry, but going right back to doing the things that hurt him again. God's people were a bit like we would be stumbling around in the darkness. They were taking one step forward, but two steps backwards. God's people were trying so hard to follow the laws that we read about in the Old Testament but they were doing it in their own strength. So God sent prophets and kings to help his people. But a lot of the time, the people didn't listen to the prophets or the kings did bad things. So God sent Jesus as the prophet, as the king, and as the true light. 
Jesus coming to earth and being born as a baby was when God's big rescue plan began. Jesus came as a baby that would be like a bright star shining in the sky, helping us to see and chasing away the darkness. When you shine a light into a dark space, what happens to the darkness? It disappears. So over here, everywhere very close to the candle is still nice and bright and light. But as you get further away from the candle, it gets darker. Now there are still some people in the world living in this darkness. They have lived so long without Jesus that they don't know how to be good and happy. When we are followers of Jesus, we walk away from darkness and we want to be in the light. That doesn't mean that we won't sin anymore, but we will no longer want to sin. We want to follow Jesus' light. In our verse for the day, John 1 verse 9, it says, the true light that would give light to everyone was coming to the earth. And the good news is Jesus is coming. Over here, I have an experiment to show you. So I have a plate full of different colors. And when I take this cotton bud and I touch it to the middle of the plate, the color moves out of the way. In the same way, darkness flees when Jesus' light shines in it. The light has come. On the night that Jesus was born, there were shepherds in the fields outside of Bethlehem looking after their sheep. All of a sudden, an angel appeared and God's greatness shone around them and they were really, really, really scared. But the angel said to them, Yo, what's up shepherds? Don't be afraid. Today in Bethlehem, a rescue has been born. He'll be God's rescuing king. He told them, that they would find the baby king lying in a manger. All of a sudden, a huge crowd of angels appeared singing to God about how wonderful he is. When the angels had left, the shepherds said, Let's go to Bethlehem and see the new king. So they made their way to Bethlehem and found Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, just as the angel said. After that, they told everyone about baby Jesus and everyone who heard them was amazed. This was the story of the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. A little bit earlier, I asked you what would happen if you walked into a room with no windows and no lights. Now, my question is, what would happen if you turned on the light switch? The room would become lighter and all darkness would disappear. You wouldn't have to worry about hurting yourself or falling over. Have you ever walked past someone famous? I wonder how many times we've walked past a movie star or been in a train with a celebrity and not realized they were there. The same thing happened to Jesus. When Jesus was on earth, a lot of people missed him. The people were in the presence of God, in the presence of royalty, and yet they ignored him. Maybe that was because he came as a carpenter's son and people were expecting a prince who lived in a palace, who had the fastest horse, who wore the coolest clothes. Maybe they didn't want to see him because he would change the way that they lived. 
maybe like us, they were scared he would change their lifestyle. John 1 verse 9 says the true light that gives light to everyone was coming to the world. Now this true light would get rid of darkness. This was the true light that would show the children of God how to live. And this true light would get rid of all sin and death. Who is this true light that John speaks of? The true light is Jesus. This is what we celebrate at Christmas. We celebrate Jesus coming as the true light, the true light that darkness could never ever put out. The true light that gives us hope and joy and peace and freedom. This is what Christmas is about. And because Jesus is the true light, he gives us light so that we can see and understand God. Jesus is the light and so we too can become light. We have a choice to make. We can be light full of hope or not. If we spend a lot of time with Jesus, we become like this candle shining brightly and we can lift up the light so that it shines to those people around us. So let's go out and be shining lights for God. And we don't need to be afraid because he will always provide the light. to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields as they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no
angels sing It was heavenly And the angels sing It was it heavenly And the angels sing And it was heavenly going to pray together Very so we're going to use these chatterboxes to pray together pray in interactive prayer so Amy can you show us how can we make this really cool chatterboxes of course so first things we need a piece of paper that looks like this yep. cut it out and turn it into a square very big square Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is fold it from corner to corner. It needs a skill to do that. Open it up and have the blank piece of paper facing towards you. And yep. then fold in all four corners. It needs a lot of focus at this part, so make sure you focus. It should look like this. You'll have the numbers on one side and a few sentences on the other side. You will have four different triangles at the front. Okay. So make sure that the sentences are now facing up and you fold those corners in, all four of them. Again, more concentration and focus is involved with this part. Okay, now it should look like this. You have pictures on one side, and numbers on the other side. Fold it in half, going one way, and fold it in half, going the other way. Then you stick your fingers in the triangles, and you have a chatterbox. That looks cool. Chatterbox. Okay, and how are we going to use these to pray? Well, very good question, Amy. So the way we are going to use this chatterbox is to pray is, I will be choosing a random number uh, from the chatterbox. So I'm going to choose number three. One, two, three. And then after counting it, you have to choose one of the pictures inside. So there's a lot of different pictures inside of the chatterbox. So I will be choosing the angel. The angel, okay. Let's see what Narek is going to pray for. Someone who's unwell. Yeah, so you will see there's a lot of different things written here. So whatever you landed, you need to pray for that. So let's pray for let's people pray. who are unwell. I'm going to just want to say thank you uh, for everything that you have done for us. I just pray for everyone who's unwell, who are sick. I just pray uh, healing over them. Uh, I just pray that uh, you heal them, you be with them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And now it's your turn to pray.
Amen. Amen. So every year, we as a church, as a community, we give to a charity. And this year, we decided to give to IJM, which Amy will explain us how to give and why we are giving to IJM. The International Justice Mission helps to find and free women and children who have been trafficked and sold into modern day slavery. So with your help this year, we can give money towards that mission. Your prayers, your action, your generosity help IJM fight the darkness in this world. So now we'll see a slide that will tell us more on how we can give and we'll pause for a moment to give you that opportunity. Let us pray together. Father God, we think of the millions of children who need freedom this Christmas. We think of those who are in slavery and waiting for rescue. Bring your comfort so that they would know they are not alone. Jesus, you came to break chains and set captives free. Shine a light into the darkness and direct the steps of IJM's investigators. Bring your freedom so that release and rescue would come. Lord Jesus, you came to bring life and life to the full. We pray for survivors of trafficking all around the world. Bring your hope so each survivor would thrive and flourish. In Jesus' name, amen. our last carol. I really wish we could sing some more. Speaking of carols, we have more carols coming up. Yes. yes. So if you're watching this online or if you're in the church watching this in the church, we have 
carrots and the rice today at 6 p.m. We are going to sing along a lot of amazing carols uh, together outside in the green area front of the church. Make sure you bring hot chocolates, uh, warm clothes, snacks, and it's gonna be a great time oh, for us great. to sing a lot of carols. Yes, and on the 20th of December, we have Battersea Rise Carol, so join us for that. And on the 25th of December, we have an all-age Christmas celebration. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah. I can't wait. But Amy, what's happening with uh, kids? Yes, so Remarkables, in the new year, we're starting a new series called Journeying with Jesus. So look out for that. We also have a Christmas devotional available on the website, so check it out. Amazing. And for youth in the new year, we are starting a new season with a lot of great games, a lot of great talks, a lot of great sessions. So if you want to know more about it, make sure you follow our Instagram page, Inhabit on the Line Youth, or check out our website at the youth section. Cool. And Grown Ups, Alpha begins again online and in person on the 18th of January. So for more information, look at smbr.church. But Amy, you're at the end of our oh, carols. But guys, we've had such a fantastic time with yeah, you today. It was, it was great. It was amazing. Oh, it was awesome. I love singing those Christmas carols. I know, right? Especially the nativity stories. They were so fantastic. epic. Yeah. But there's more to come. Yes. There's more to come. Yes. yes. Next week, make sure you join us. And on the Christmas Day, yes. we have amazing join stuff Join us on for Christmas you. Day. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>